So as I'm reading books now, because I sometimes end up doing dramatic intros, I write down when I get to a page that I think has a quote that like could be really good for a dramatic intro, and I've never written down as many pages as I did for this book. Like, I don't know, 20? And it only slowed down for the last 100 pages because the inc increase in spoiler page, like spoiler quotes, increases. If, if I was reading this on Kindle, I would have highlighted like half of this book. It came like this, and it went, never coerced, never subject to entreaty. The goddess remembered her children sometimes, and sometimes she forgot them in the caprice of her nature. She could shower gifts like blessed rain in the spring, or she could turn her back and let ice and fire have their way. She had a face of laughter and one of desire, a countenance of true compassion, and a terrible visage of judgment. In the teachings of Arbone, it was Koronos, the god, who was kinder, more soberly caring for men and women. Rian suffered them, and loved them, but she could be cruel, as nature was cruel. It was the god who held their mortal children always in mind, who did not fail to see their sufferings upon the earth. So it had been taught in Arbone for generations. Most men leave home to learn about the wider world, you don't seem to want to know. A different sort of elbow in the ribs. Blaze thought of stating as much, but after a moment said only, some men leave home to leave home. There were ripples to events, and they went a long way sometimes, across the dark pools of time and the world. He was certain of nothing just now. He felt like one of those legendary dancers, from Aramonda's distant past, who were said to have leaped over the horns of bulls for the pleasure of their kings. He was in the middle of such a leap right now, grimly conscious of the gleaming, killing horns it had seemed to blaze. Late last night, a thought shaped half of piety and half of simple fear, that Koronos had actually guided him here to Arbone, that his journey south had not been fortuitous, not simply an escape from burdens and sorrow at home or in Porteza. It had been a movement towards destiny, the one chance the world might offer him to make good the vow he'd sworn when he left Garsank Castle. Men were often no more or less than what others saw in them, and no one in the world would ever look at this tall northern Corin in the same way ever again. That might, he thought suddenly, explain the sadness. Hello everyone, we are back for some more historical fantasy standalones by a person who's quickly becoming just one of my favorite authors and one of the authors whose stories I consistently enjoy, which is Mr. Guy Gavriel K. I have now read Fionavar over the last three months and I really enjoyed Fionavar, but while reading Fionavar I was like, okay, this isn't as good as his historical stuff and reading this. I was reminded, like, yeah, this is this is where Guy Gavriel K truly shines. And b before, like, the two historical standalones that I'd read were Tigana, which is based on, like, Renaissance Italy, and The Lions of Our Song, which is, like, medieval Spain. And those are two of his, like, most f commonly praised books. The so uh, A Song for Erbone tends to be around the middle of the pack from what I've seen. Like, it's not a Guy Gavril K book that is frequently, like, considered one of his worst, with, like, Fiona Var and Isabel, but it's also, I very rarely see it be among his best, like, people consider him among his best, so I didn't know what to expect, and it ruled, it kicked ass, I love this, but what is it about? So this, uh, the, the setting had me a bit worried, because... So it's set in medieval France, which is fine. I have nothing against France. But if you read the back, um, it's it, it focuses on troubadours, who are like singers, uh, how they fill the air with songs of love and desire. And Guy Gavriel K, for those of you who know, tends to be uh, pretty horny. He is not known for fading to black. He tends to have 
you know, a lot of sexy times in his books. And I read that and I was like, oh my, this is going to be even for him. This is going to be excessive, isn't it? And to my surprise, this I think is the least horny Guy Gavriel K book that I've read. Uh, it isn't to say it's like, you know, don't go into it thinking it's going to be like a Brandon Sanderson novel, but compared to Tigana and Al Razan, it has way less pages devoted to that. And in general, it's just, it's less of a focus, which based on the premise, you would expect it to be the most horny, but that's what we got. So basically it's primarily following, like the main conflict is the conflict between two kind of nations that would be like ones that did exist in France, it wasn't all one country, which if we look on our handy dandy map, which is kind of small, of definitely not France. Well, it's not quite France because it's it's next to the ocean. Um, but these guys, Arbone, are the good guys, and those guys are the bad guys. Because this this is not this is not the lines of our Rasson where there isn't really someone you can firmly say is a protagonist, there isn't someone who you can firmly say is an antagonist. In that, the point of the novel of The Lines of Our Song was for you to get attached to and invested in people in both sides and how there were people you both loved and hated on both sides. That's kind of true, but for the most part here, this novel has a clear protagonist. Blaze is the protagonist of this novel. He has a point of view in basically every chapter. I think there's like 17 or 18 chapters. And almost every chapter has a Blaze point of view and then someone else's point of view. And I think he prob Blaze probably has... I, I would guess the novel is about 50% Blaze and then 50% split among like 10 people. So he's, he's clearly the protagonist. One thing I think Guy Gavriel K does exceptionally well, and it's one thing that makes his worlds characters and plots kind of feel more real and not feel fake or like convoluted is that every character kind of like has their own story going on and the story of our character it's not like all these stories are happening independent of each other the stories interact it's like you can tell that what's going on is this giant complicated web. And in this one, we're primarily following like one string of that web. But the other, like there are other main strings and basically every character has their main story. And while their story might be slightly different from the main character's story, the various stories that are going on interacts. So Blaze's story is going to interact with Ariane's story, who's going to interact with Bertrand's story, etc. And I think in general, that's something Guy Gavril K has done, especially in his historical novels, extraordinarily well. But even in Fionavar, where you really feel like there is a story for like 10 different characters at least that they are the protagonist of, it just ha doesn't happen to be the one we're told and it interacts and it just ma it always makes his worlds feel so lived in and his supporting cast to me feel so well realized. Uh, I also, I think structurally, this is slightly more standard. What I've seen in Tigana, and I, there's going to be a lot of comparing this book to the other two. Sorry, I can't not do it. But this, the other two Guy Gavril K books have like fantastic starts, especially Lions, in my opinion, is one of my favorite starts to any novel I've read. And then they kind of dropped off in the middle. And for both Tigana and Hours on the middle was my least favorite part. And then they both had incredible endings. This one, I think, didn't have as good of an ending or as an impactful of an ending or as iconic of an ending as Tigana or The Lions of Hours on. However, this was, in my opinion, easily the strongest middle of a Guy Gavril K book. I thought it was the tightest Guy Gavril K book and had the least amount of fluff. And I think... That's why I can see, I, I know it is some people's favorites, which is why even though it was less impactful, it actually did have some stuff like that, that I actually think could make it even better than the Lions of Hours Hall or Tigana, even though for me, I prioritize how good a book was at its best. So for me, I don't like it quite as much. Uh, the other big one is, I would say, I don't know if this is a criticism, but it's just something that differentiates it is the, as I said, like the antagonist. I think Guy Gavrilke has actually called him in like M, uh, AMAs on Reddit. He's referred to him as evil. So he actually, 
Guy Gavril K does this thing where he he doesn't stay married to one tense or one like style of writing so it's gonna always be kind of a mix of omniscient and limited and he's gonna move from chapter to chapter to whatever he thinks fits it best and he even does switch between present and past and uh in general there's one character that when you're either in his head or his presence even it switches to present tense and I think, I, I, I will say it's a fact. I don't know if this is exactly the point. He, Guy Gavril K, he doesn't want to tell people what he was exactly trying to do with it because he doesn't want to be the authority on him. He wants it to be like, whatever you do. Like He doesn't want someone to get something different out of it and then think they're wrong. But it makes almost like, puts you on edge because of how different it is. And it kind of just like, makes you almost like nervous it puts you more in the moment i don't know it's weird but it worked and again we're mentioning like the antagonist at who's king adam or well he's one of them he's not a particularly like morally balanced antagonist uh his introduction which i think is in chapter three the the pair the the, for the first paragraph it's like okay he's He's something. He he is certainly something. This isn't someone who, for me, was on the same level as Brandon of Your Grath, who's uh, one of the antagonists of Tigana, and was, I think, one of the best antagonists in the genre. But he was intimidating, and you do he was pretty hateable. He's not the only antagonist, because, as I said, Blaze, while it is the main story, it is not the only story going on. It's just the one this novel is the most focused on. And the other, I would say second most important conflict of this novel is between two not pov characters which is bertrand and urtzi something like that which is two the two of the most powerful dukes of arabone who have a a feud that you'll see the cause of in the prologue of this novel and they've they hate each other and their kind of animosity towards each other is a, is a driving factor in this novel it was kind of funny. Most of the way into this novel, I was kind of like, "Wow, this you know, this isn't quite as dark as uh, as Al Rasal or Tigana. Maybe this is like a little bit lighter." And then I got to one point, I was like, "Oh, okay." All right. And uh, Guy Gavril K, like by no means is he like a grimdark author. He very much is. He's not gonna shy away from the how humanity can be cruel and sadistic and selfish. But he's also not going to shy away from the other aspects of humanity that also exist. Like, you know, humanity at times is noble or selfless. And one thing in general that I think kind of I could see annoying people about Guy Gavril K is his novels, tend, they are not going to be novels where you follow someone who's like an everyman, who's like kind of average. If you were to compare the characters here, I, I mean, in all honesty, most novels, uh, let's compare it to Lord of the Rings. Sam and Frodo, for example, in terms of morally, they're not everyman, but in terms of like how capable they are, they're kind of average. In general, a lot of the people you follow in Guy Gavril K books will be extremely capable, which I think they, they still tend to be flawed as people and characters. They just, he tends to have uh, characters that we follow, cast of characters that are pretty competent. I also, one thing I want to note that I think he does extraordinarily well, uh, especially in this novel and Al Rasson, less so in Tigana, is having dialogue with subtext. This happens a lot with Bertrand and Ertzi. I'm going to pronounce names wrong. I don't do audiobooks. They're French names. Sorry. Who, you know, hate each other. And a lot of the time, not just between them, but maybe the most with them, there's dialogue where they're saying to each other, like, not just the words. There's a lot of subtext. And Guy Gavril K, in general, he really does trust the reader to think things through and to be looking for subtext and dialogue. I think these are novels that if you were to just take everything at face value, you would probably not enjoy that much. Like, when people say something like that or talking, you have to kind of consider what they're actually saying. I will say... I think he does a really good job of balancing the line between having dialogue be meaningful in ways that isn't like the mo just 
the most obviously apparent while also not being indecisible and you have to read it 23 times to know what's going on. I still think you can catch most of what's being said on the first read. You just kind of have to stop and think about it and not uh, just be like, you know, this person said this and therefore may they mean that. And that's something I really enjoy about his works. And this, again, had fantastic maneuvering and scheming and politics. I think Guy Gavril K writes some of the best politics. I would not quite put this on the level of the lines of our Rousseau in general, but also politically. But still, I'd take this over the vast majority of fantasy books that I've read. This might be because they're they're largely they're probably in some ways based on things that have happened historically, so they tend to be somewhat consistent. But uh, you know, it's obviously not only that, and also obviously a lot of stuff historically, a lot of gaps have to be filled in. And this isn't like it's not supposed to be an actual like faithful retelling of what happened historically. It's meant to capture the time period, not like to be a summary of events. So I don't know how true that would actually be. Uh, also, I would say in terms of magic, this is definitely moving away from Tigana, but there's still magic does play a larger role than it does in Al Rasal. It actually plays more of a role early. There's a there's an island off the coast of Erebone where the priestess who uh, of Rion, who's one of the goddesses, there's two main gods in this. Uh, there's kind of one of the main elements of this novel is that, you know, the people we don't like, they are uh, an extremely male-dominated society and are an extremely sexist society, while Erebone, which is the people we like in general, it's not that simple. It's not morally black and white, but it's less morally ambiguous than I think, like the lines of our song is, is a society where uh, women in general have a lot more freedom and power, and you know, aren't lesser citizens, which is you know, one of the reasons we like our bone more. But there's also there's two there's like a god and a goddess, and so in the northern place they they only worship the god, and. Uh, but the priestess of the goddesses, especially on that island, do have some magic going on. Don't expect this to be like, you know, Malazan Book of the Fallen, Dresden Files, Mistborn magic, where people are like, you know, blowing stuff up or shooting fireballs or flying through the air. This is, uh, it's always going to be a lot more subtle, except maybe in like, you know, not so much in Tigana or Fionavar, but in, I think I can expect from here on out, the magic to be a lot more subtle where it's more like, as he, he's mentioned in interviews, it's kind of, he takes some of the beliefs of the time and just makes them true. But obviously the people didn't believe at the time that, you know, priestess could go fuego and shoot fireballs and stuff like that. And I, I kind of wish he would almost do more high magic stuff because I really like the magic stuff that's in here. Guy Gavril K is obviously amazing in atmosphere. I think... Guy Gavril K, it's it's amazing that this isn't, like, overwritten. I actually think in terms of how, like, readable it is, this m might be the easiest to read of the three. Maybe I'm not remembering Tigana or Al Rousson properly. It does tend to introduce quite a few characters pretty quickly, just because one, re one consequence of it being based on a historical setting is you don't have the convenient fantasy trope of you start with someone who lives in the Shire or Edmonds Field or a farm and then they get introduced to the wider world as you get introduced to the wider world you get start generally in some kind of historical political situation whether it be some kind of war or tension or anything like that and so a lot of characters do get thrown at you but it's not particularly dense while also still not being while still trusting the reader like it doesn't repeat information over and over again. One thing that really kind of annoyed me here is that this book didn't have a Dramatis Personae when Tigana and Lines of Our Rison did have a Dramatis Personae. A Dramatis Personae would have been awesome. But I was saying, like, it's not overreading in that I actually think Guy Gav Roque, in terms of describing the world and setting the scene, probably uses less words than most fantasy authors. I'd say he basically, when it comes to scene setting, he's like a sniper. Where it's like, he's like, you know, all right, I'm going to just take like a few shots here, uh, but I'm going to hit everything I need to. And he's so, so good at just being like, all right, I'm going to add, you know, 
the, to the basic description. It's like, you know, a man walks into a room and he, he's going to put in some words to describe the room and he's just going to hit you with like the four words interspersed throughout the first paragraph as people are talking to each other that allow me to just perfectly picture the room in my mind. It's it's magical stuff. There's a reason his prose is so praised. It's, in my opinion, the best in the genre and the best that I've ever read. It's just, it's magical. And then also a huge amount of this book and Guy Gavril K books in general do fall to, I think it might be something George R. R. Martin quoted someone else said, but that the most important conflict like is the conflict within the human heart. The characters gen tend to, to be very like internally conflicted and so you do spend time in characters being introspective and it's so good that's one of the reasons why you know i have 20 pages marked down for quotes that i really liked and i wasn't even really doing it for the first like 100 pages and then i started because i remembered like oh yeah goodreads is probably gonna have a crappy selection of quotes if i want to do a dramatic reading that's a story for another time then I started writing them down, and it was just constant. I almost got tired but of writing them. Of get, I'd get to, like, a great quote, and I'd be like, all right, I have to add that as well. But anyways, it's if you're a fan of the more, like, more, I don't know the best word to describe it, but, you know, not straightforward prose, I would really recommend this. It's exquisite. That's all I got to say. I gave the book a 9.3 out of 10. So it's in between the vast majority of books, but I didn't quite like it as much as Tigana or Al Razan, even though I actually thought it was kind of a more clean novel in terms of not having parts that, like not having as messy, less messy. Lions and Tigana, I think uh, the middle wasn't as good as this was. This just kind of steadily got better. But it just didn't hit the highs. The ending was still very good, like the final act. And it still has very excellent scenes, but just didn't quite have the highs of his other two historical standalones. So it would be third right now on my Guy Gavril K power ranking, which is kind of where I was expecting it to be, because this isn't one of the Guy Gavril K novels that you see people talking about a huge amount. But it was still pretty damn good. So I'm really excited to read, go back to his historical stuff. It really, I think, just is clearly better than Fionavar. And I think Sarantine Mosaic is next, which I know is a lot of people's favorite stuff by Guy Gavril K. So I'm so excited for that. I, I know it has chariots. But that is all I got for a song for Erbone. My guess is not a huge amount of you will have read this, but those who have, let me know what you thought of it relative to his other works. I thought it was pretty excellent, but I wouldn't have it as top tier guy, Gavriel K. And for those who have not, I think if you're thinking of starting guy, Gavriel K, I would probably take Lions or Tegan over this. I am going to have a video in the future where I kind of go through all the options, but it would be a totally valid first guy, Gavriel K book to read. The reading order doesn't really matter. Anyways, let me know what you think if you have read the book or if you might read the book. Have a nice day, everyone.